I just plopped myself down on my sheepskin and I was sitting here about to go through my books for canning, preserving, and traditional food recipes, which are all kept right here for my convenience. And then I realized that most of the books, they're either gifts or they have been referred to me by other people. And so it occurred to me that maybe I should bring you along and we should talk about some of these books and some of my favorite recipes. So I'm gonna grab the bundles, head over to the couch where it'll be a little more comfortable to record and uh, show you what we've got. Let's start with canning. These were the first books for food preservation I ever bought. The very first books I invested in were from Food in Jars and I love them. Uh, Marissa writes the most simple, beautiful recipes. I started by following along with her blog and just looking at the recipes she showed, following her on Instagram, learning what I could, and then I invested in food in jars and naturally sweet food in jars. And so naturally sweet uses things like maple syrup, honey, coconut sugar, the ginger pickle beets that I love are in food in jars. There's a hot pepper jam in naturally sweet food in jars. And then my favorite caramelized red onion jam, the onion jam that I'm always talking about, uh, is in naturally sweet food in jars because she uses maple sugar, which I do use. Then the next one I got was Weck Home Preserving. Now, I do not use the Weck jars. However, you don't have to, to use this book. The book is a standalone. She talks about flavored salts, infused honeys, elderberry syrup, vanilla, ranch dressings, um, kraut, all sorts of things. So she does ferments, she does infusions, and then she has the, um, the canning. And the reason I got this book was specifically for the ketchup recipe. It is the one ketchup recipe that I've seen that is very plain and basic rather than filled with tons of spices. Now, I do like the, the ketchups that have a little bit more of that, um, but this was just a really, really simple. So here's an elderberry syrup using elderberry, cinnamon, ginger, maple syrup, lemon, and um, if you want vanilla cloves, things like that. So that's a great resource. This is a really good investment, this book. And I think there's no home that should be without the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. This book is just filled. I mean, you can see I've put little note cards into all the pages of things I want to make and it's just endless. So my green tomato hot dog relish comes from here. There's an apple rhubarb chutney that I wanna make. There's a green tomato chutney, Singapore hot chili sauce. That is going to be, I'm gonna be making that one really soon. Cranberry mustard, lemony eggplant caponata, I just made that one. Roasted leek and tomato soup. This is a must have. Then I stumbled on this one. I'm not sure where I found this one, but this is Beginner's Guide to Canning. And this is Basics of Water Bath and Pressure Canning. So it takes care of both of those things for you. There's candied jalapenos. Um, we've got turkey and vegetables, potato leek soup, beef stew, curry soup, minestrone cabbage soup, baked beans, um, herbed green beans, salsas, chutneys, it's packed. Pickled red cabbage. I'm trying to think if I used that recipe or not. I don't think so. There's a strawberry rhubarb filling. So I haven't used this book as much, but the reason I got it was this winter, I wanna do a lot of pressure canning, especially with beans. And I really like the recipes. I wanna do a baked bean. Um, this book has a uh, refried bean starter in it 
that you can pressure can. So I'm very excited to dig more into this one this winter. This book came recommended and it is the complete guide to pressure canning. Everything you need to know to can meats, vegetables, and meals in a jar. This book is fabulous. The recipes inside of it are wonderful, but I'm gonna tell you what I like the most about it. So it has this great chart, vegetable processing chart. You've got the quantity, the yield, the style, the jar size, jar head space, if you need salt, process time, and then the gauge um, that you would need for processing in a pressure canner. This is just awesome. I love having little charts like that. Okay, so that's all my canning books. All right, so then moving on, we have fermented vegetables. As you can see, this book is absolutely gorgeous. This is basically your guide to anything you would ever need to know about fermented foods. The recipes are incredibly creative. If you're feeling nervous about ferments, this is your book. This will tell you everything you need to know. On the front, it says krauts, kimchi, brined pickles, chutneys, relishes, and pastes. Um, it will not disappoint. This book will not disappoint. Then there's Freeze Fresh, and this is from Crystal Schmidt, and she has the very popular Instagram account, Whole Fed Homestead, and she is like the one to talk to about preserving foods in the freezer. Isn't that a beautiful cover? I just love this book. Not only is this book so helpful for knowing how to freeze things, but it then tells you what to do with them. So that's a place that we can get really get stuck is we make these beautiful frozen foods and then we take them out of the freezer and we're kind of like, eh, yeah, don't know what to do with this. This doesn't taste so great. So that is, that is the best resource I have seen for using frozen foods. I threw this one in kind of for fun. This is Grown and Gathered. Look at the, it's a beautiful book. It's Traditional Living Made Modern. And this is a book worth getting just for the gorgeous photos in here. It is so beautiful. And they kind of talk about everything. It's this couple, um, I think they're Australian. It is an absolutely stunning book. There are recipes, but mostly I just got this one to sort of, to have that like connection to the land feeling, just to have a story of someone else who is living off the land and making beautiful food like this. This is my dream pantry shelf, by the way. I should probably just show this to Dave. If I just show him this picture, he'll understand what I want. That's what I want. The last two are traditional foods. They were both gifts, actually. So I had this Sally Fallon Nourishing Traditions book when the kids were very little, and my friend group and I were exploring things like raw milk, not eating grains, or not eating refined grains, and uh, just really learning about traditional foods. At some point, I think I lent it to somebody, it disappeared, I don't know. But um, this was sent to me not long ago. And it's just, I and mean, this is just a fabulous resource. One place for me that these books, this one and this one, I get a little tied up on is that I don't use dairy. And if you don't use dairy, it can be hard to have that like full traditional food experience. But I will tell you, it's possible. You just have to do some converting. So this one, The Nourished Kitchen, again, absolutely stunning book. This was a gift as well. And this is where I go when I need to do things like figure out how to use liver or heart, um, things that I might not normally eat. It also takes you through things like um, using amazing soups, all sorts of root vegetables, um, here's one, salt roasted clams with butter, potted shrimp with orange and spice. I mean, so good. Sweet molasses baked beans with bacon and toasted mustard seed, white bean and butternut squash mash with garlic and sage, wild mushroom soup. Oh, so good. 
So a lot of things in here are very cheese and gluten heavy, dairy and gluten heavy. And so I just work around those and I go to the recipes that really work for me. But isn't, I mean, that is beautiful. Beautiful. My kitten is sitting outside the door tearing up a cardboard box. So I'm just sitting here listening to her. Hopefully that was helpful for you. What I would love to know is what books do you rely on? What do you go to time and time again? What book is the most dirty and written in and earmarked of all your books? What is it? Um, because those are the ones that we truly use and truly love. There she is, a little trouble. I could talk about books all day. I have some yellow split pea soup simmering on the stove using one of the very first Hannah yams that I got out of the garden. I am beyond thrilled and I can actually smell it when I'm down here. There's something about the way the smells move. Um, I've mentioned I don't have a good sense of smell. Years of sinus infections, ear infections, uh, dust mite allergy, things like that. Um, but I can kind of smell the soup so I'm very excited. I hope this was fun. I hope this was helpful and gives you some ideas of resources that are out there for you. What I would always suggest you do is see if you can order a book from the library first. And if you love it, then you go ahead and order it. That's kind of how I got most of these books was I tried them out first. I got so many canning books that I was like, I'm never gonna use this. This is just like so uh, much sugar and um, just foods that I'm not gonna eat. And so once I figured out which ones that I would really want to have and own from the library, then I was able to commit. And finally, this is what I do to the books when I get them. I get the book and I open it up and I go through and I tag the pages of things that I think I'm interested in immediately. And that way I don't get lost because I don't wanna to have to do that again and again and again. If I do that on the first go and I really heavily mark, then I know when I go to grab this book that I can just go to these few pages and see what's most important to me and then narrow it down that way. And I, I can surprise myself, oh, that's, I don't remember that recipe, that's really interesting, that's helpful. And then I don't get so overwhelmed. My mission today was actually, this all started me plopping down because I was going to make green tomato jam from Pomona, a Pomona's, Pomona's, Pomona's pectin recipe that I've been making every year. And I can't get my hands on Pomona's pectin. I have some order that should be coming, but I already had all these green tomatoes all chopped up, ready to go. I'm a little worried they're going bad. So I wanted to go through my books and see where else I could use green tomatoes. And then I found old fashioned tomato jam, which is green tomato jam. They use sugar, which I will switch to honey. And um, it's basically the same without any of the pectin added. You use a lemon basically to create the thickness, the gel. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. So that will be an easy one. It's green tomatoes, sugar, cinnamon, cloves, and a lemon. Uh, about eight cups of green tomatoes per five cups of sugar. I'm gonna completely alter that to about, I'm gonna do probably two cups of honey, I'm thinking, 
for every eight cups of tomatoes, and we'll see how that goes. That's exciting. That's exactly why we have these books sitting here waiting for us. So that one's in my beginner's guide to canning. All right, so I guess next time we will make tomato jam. I'm gonna make it right now and it'll be the next video that I share with you guys. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you, bye. Oh my gosh, I matched my pillow. Look at that, totally matching my pillow today. I have like these pants on. Yeah, that's cute. Me and my pillow are autumn. We're all autumn today.